This is another video about uh, shapes using the pinwheel vertex. Um, and this will be using just four-way pinwheels. Uh, in another video we used three-way. Um, and in another one we used five-way. And those are all connected together there. Um, but this one uses four-way and I'll just show you how to make those. And in some of the other videos, it was important that they all uh, point the same direction, just like, you know, blades in a propeller. It wouldn't work if some were angled one way, some were angled the other. Um, so these are all pointing clockwise, and that'll be the case with this. This particular build, though, um, you could do half and half. You could do half clockwise, half counterclockwise, and I might show that at the end, um, what this exact thing would look like with half of them reversed. But we're going to do right now where they all open clockwise. You can see that these are facing the same way clockwise, the points of them there. Um, and just to show you how to do that, we start with a single hyper tile and we have the uh, top and bottom closest to us and we put the connector on the right side, okay, the top right side. If we put it on the top left side, it would cause a propeller, a pinwheel, the one counterclockwise, but these are all clockwise, so we'll be consistent with that there. And now when we add new ones to it, and we can put that anywhere, but we'll start at the top. When we add extra ones to it, we want to make sure all the connections are spiral connections so that when it hinges, it almost like pages in a, in a warped book, um, as opposed to if it was a um, accidentally a uh, zigzag connection, right? Then as you try to do that, it would get in the way. So Again, they're all going to be facing the same way. So there's two connected. I now will add another um, connector further down the line. And um, like that, again, making sure it's a spiral connection. And now for the for, uh, fourth one, okay, and again, making sure that's the right way. So you see how this opens clockwise. Now, you don't have to, but I've been encouraging. Um, look at that. The whole thing is like a book, just closes like that. Um, to put a final connector that connects the first one we started with to this last one, there's room for it. Um, and what that ensures is just a little bit stronger and more symmetrical, whatever. Okay, so there it is. I'll do that one more time. Again, here's the hyper tile. I start with it with these points up and down closest to me. And because I want this to open clockwise, I put it on the right top side um, and not this side, not the left top side. Okay, oops, that'd be a zigzag. Boom. Push that over. And I can put this next one down here. It doesn't really matter. Um, you'll see. Whoop. Lost that connector there. We'll pick that up later. I could put this down here. Let me secure that down here as I add this one. Okay, and you can notice by the way when you hear the clicks, these are extra strong connectors that I like using as display structures, also in the videos, just so they're not, you know, I don't have a wrestle with them falling apart as I'm making more, but you know, it is what it is. I'll put this one here. The final one I'll add, final blade, and then the final connector to link these two in the spot remaining and there you have it okay and again see how it opens clockwise now in a previous video I was making a cube octahedron out of these so I had some um, I was making some squares they're all four-way vertices on a cube octahedron um, but I was making some um, squares out of them and then some triangles to give it curvature and I made the comment if it was all just square, 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 it wouldn't curve. It would just form like a big, like a tiled floor or like a piece of graph paper with just a bunch of squares all linked four ways to each other. Um, and actually, I've already done a lot of that here already. And you can see it does lie kind of flat. I'm going to do a four by four and I'll just finish it up with these. And I've decided not to try any kind of color pattern. It's just kind of random. But just to show you what I'm doing, I'm simply taking and connecting and it could be put in the middle, and you only need one. Um, you could put two if you're using softer connectors. And uh, 
it just makes a nice little shape. It's a flat shape. It's a big old square, but it has some cool things you can do with it that I'll show you. Um, what shall I put here? Let's be a little creative and have this be the, a purple. Again, random on the color choices. I just don't have any two colors next to each other. No reason I don't. If it were truly random, <laughs> there'd be just as good a chance of two colors being next to each other as not. Let's put a blue one here. This is all pretty easy. Once you've made all these, what would that be, 16 uh, four-way pinwheels. Um, and then it's just connecting them. And here's what I meant by this. These are all um, clockwise. Um, and that's important if you have like triangular shapes or pentagonal shapes here, but these are all squares. And square being made of four and fours and even number, this could have gone clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and that could be the pattern throughout, and it would have a different appearance. I will do that afterward to show um, what that does, and uh, you can experiment with different things. Obviously, if they were all counterclockwise, it would just be the mirror image of this, and that would not have any different properties, I don't think, <laughs> than this one has. And what do I mean by properties? One is, of course, that it lays completely flat. That's kind of nice. Um, by the way, do notice what we've got here. We've just got a spiral chain right there, 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 intersecting spiral chains this way. So this is just four spiral chains, eight long, crossing four others for a total of 64 tiles. Um, so one of the neat things this does, and I'll be interested in seeing whether the one that alternates clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, does the same thing, but I can take this and grab these two ends here and pull them apart and give you a rhombus, not just in the overall shape, but a bunch of rhombuses in the in, in between, and taking these four-way pinwheels and kind of making it a six-way pinwheels with two open spots, and I can obviously push it the other way. This will go off camera, but boom. Okay, so that's kind of a cool flexy thing it does there. And speaking of flexy, yeah, I'm going to now lift these two far corners up. And as I do so, these, the other two corners, go up automatically. So I'm, I'm not lifting them, but they're being brought up by the other ones. Um, and uh, I'll try to show that in side view here. Okay, and it forms a kind of a bowl. I guess we shouldn't be getting closure on this. If, it, uh, if it's made up of nothing but squares and four-way connections. But I think when you do this, see, look at that. I could probably just sink another four-way right there and get this whole thing closed. But I have kind of done this. I've made three-way junctures here. Um, so, interesting. Okay? So, there it is. A, a four-by-four uh, structure that is just like a flat plane, but one that has this cool property of um, flexing like this, and also lots of, oh, that's the other thing you could do, sorry, you could just roll it up like this, or roll it like this, either way, it's very ambidextrous, <laughs> and I could connect these, should we do that real fast, let's see what that does. I know that I have to connect them all, but uh, it wouldn't take long, just four of them. And then I've got a tube, a cylinder, made out of these, that same piece of graph paper, if you will. Um, okay, and that's kind of fun, and there's that rhombus down the middle, but we have some flexibility like this. Um, so, there it is, uh, yet another thing you can do with this is make it into a kind of a tower, um, freestanding, sure, why not, um, a tube, cylinder, um, kind of cool with all these, uh, four-way pinwheels, um, are they vertices? Uh, if the thing's not really curving, I don't know if I'd call them vertices, but they certainly are intersection points. Okay, so I went ahead and redid the 4x4 four four, um, 
and this time they actually do alternate clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and so forth, like a checkerboard. Um, and I said I'd see if it has anything different. It doesn't look that different, but check this out. Uh, remember how the other one we could go like this? This one can be <laughs> scrunched much more together on the diagonal. Um, and then pulled out like that so it's got a lot more um, flexibility because as they I guess as they start to overlap they don't get in each other's way as much as it did when they were all clockwise so that's kind of neat and what about the folding up into a bowl again that's about as far as we could get with the other one this one it's absolutely no problem getting it all together um, so this one is way more flexible um, and in terms of making it into a, uh, a tube as well. We could put a couple of these on there and see what that does. If there's anything noticeable about that. Okay, probably get by with just two of them to see what happens. Okay, and again um, it has this capacity, so that doesn't seem that different, but um, definitely has a different look to it. Um, it's got these neat uh, <laughs> kind of four-leaf clovers there. Um, so, anyway, uh, the 4x4 four four done not all clockwise, but half and half, alternating, and just a lot more uh, flexibility, um, a lot more uh, kind of agility. Um, so that's fun.